Yesterday I had a really interesting idea and it was something about how basically mania and psychosis and other organic non-ordinary states of consciousness are actually a protection mechanism in consciousness and what I mean by that is it's a way designed into reality that we as human beings cannot be accidentally or coercively conditioned to the point where we are on self-destruct. What I mean by that is there's no way a leader of some sort could come in with their own ideas and propaganda and basically just condition, condition us into a very narrow band because a certain number of people are going to go crazy and see totally different things and not believe that consensus reality that the leader is trying to create or the person that's well-intentioned or not so well-intentioned. So actually, this state, these states of mania and psychosis and even depression are ways that the human psyche manifests to ensure that memes or ideas or thoughts can't get too narrow or conditioned. We're already conditioned enough. We're conditioned into believing and seeing this reality that we all co-create together. Now, if people that went into these visionary and non-ordinary states were actually seen as basically consciousness popping up with new ideas normally we think that ideas come from other people and books and learning and knowledge and education but ideas sometimes come out of nowhere the so-called eureka moments or serendipity and Basically, I feel like people that go through these states of consciousness sometimes are um, are like little lights of serendipity that people could actually work with people that are in these experiences to harvest some of their visions and their ideas. And the ideas and visions aren't necessarily something that needs to happen today, even though in that timeless state, sometimes it feels like, oh, I got to save the world today. It could be a vision or an idea that actually unfolds years later, but it's a way, it's a different way for ideas and communication to be created than in our limited capacity that we have and I feel like there's a knowingness that's accessed that's actually beyond the structures of thought and conditioning that's really important to acknowledge and this is acknowledged in a lot of shamanic cultures but in our culture in the West where we don't want things to change where we want people to conform people are just locked up and there's no meaning or anything assessed from anything anybody's saying it's just seen as pathology and I really think that's a failure a visionary state isn't necessarily functional but once the visionary state has completed a person can regain their functionality but if what is meant to come through that visionary state is never acknowledged and and harvested and and witnessed and pulled into the collective manifestation as opposed to just being in the unfolded implicate order 
people are going to just keep experiencing these states and really these people are messengers of some sort we keep thinking that if we just keep getting more scientific knowledge that is going to help the world when the real knowledge is the knowing that comes when we stop knowing that we know and when we're in that state of awe and wondering how we even know what we're at that moment understanding yet since it's very difficult to understand that somebody could understand in that way people that experience that get profoundly misunderstood and they misunderstand themselves too and plus they're given a story and how they should interpret themselves and then said and then told since you now interpret yourself this way because we've psychoeducated you to believe this now you need to recover when in my mind the person has a gift and they had things to share and to be um, communicated that weren't even of themselves it wasn't from their own personal ego stuff and yeah there's some weird stuff mixed in there but that's because it's not a linear thing it's not a if it was just this perfect coherent message um, well that would be kind of boring if everyone just was able to do that it's a creative state not just in that a person can have creative things that they're able to manifest through their own actions but it's creative in that it's destructive to the whole entire ego structure and then instead of us saying wow a person could actually transform even if they don't have any messages a person's ego structure could collapse somewhat and we can assist them to to transform into a life of their choosing but instead most of the time we teach people that they should be really sad that that old self is gone and should try to get it back and recover their self when really it's more like rediscovering and recreating oneself it's actually an opportunity for a whole new life and there is a very difficult period involved and that's the destruction part but so often with the story that we're told that now we're deficient that's what really needs to be recovered from so why do we tell that story why do we tell people that story why not why can't there be discontinuity in a person's self why can't I be one person one day and somebody new the next? Why do we say this takes time? It doesn't always take time, not in everybody. It's one of those things that you really have to experience for yourself. And I have a sense that one day people will actually want to go through this experience. And maybe they'll be taught that perhaps one day who they thought they were is going to collapse and they're going to have an opportunity to create a new self. All the work of meditation, all the work of self-improvement is all to feel less and less tension, less and less of the ego. And with mania and psychosis, a lot of that can be collapsed within a couple months. 